Yeah, welcome to the session here. Um, the topic is bench learning. Um, bench learning in general is a, it's a format, it's a learning format for best practice and knowledge sharing. Uh, so what it is exactly we'll show you later on. So I'm, I'm Benedict, I'm from the small consultancy called uh, Cognion in Nuremberg and we are a specialized in knowledge management and learning organization. So around the topics of internal community, internal community management, knowledge management. I'm also a trainer of various uh, social media tools at Audi who have a lot of uh, big array of, of tools within the boundary of the firm implemented just recently. So for the agenda for, for the next uh, roughly 20 minutes, I guess, uh, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about the format of bench learning. So what this um, format looks like and how it contrasts, for instance, to benchmarking. Uh, then a quick view on some ben bench learning project we recently conducted. Um, just to give you some impressions about what a bench, bench learning project looks like in practice. And finally, some thoughts about what do you have in mind when you come up and with such a project, the top five in, uh, in our view. So for, for the format of bench learning, it can be described via these four or via four uh, categories, uh, people, knowledge, duration and time. First aspect is people. So a bench learning project is about connecting people to create trustful relationships. So in contrast to, for instance, a normal benchmarking where it's about data. So this relates directly then to the next topic of knowledge. Because you bring people together, it's not the focus on codification, explicit knowledge, but sharing of um, tacit knowledge via conversations. So and these conversations might take place within a big group like here, sharing a story and learning, but it also takes place in, in more one-to-one -one settings as well. The next topic then is duration, whereas benchmarking is oftentimes a comparison in one spot in a, in a time. Uh, bench learning is more like a journey because it's a project that lasts for about one year. It's by default a, a journey, so to speak. The last topic then here is time. The bench learning, we also take a look at what happened in the organization, but also what's happening right now, what are the most recent topics companies are dealing with, but also take a look into the future. So what are the next uh, things they want to obtain, next things they want to implement, and how also can participants from the different um, companies can help each other. So this is roughly the main categories, and uh, this now maps into a uh, project. So we have one main topic like it was in 2015 internal community management, in 2012 we had social intranets, you can apply this to any domain, to any topic, basically. We divided the main topic then to three subtopics that are more specific then, because this is the basis then for the offline events. So in general, normally uh, seven to up to 12 organizations took part in these projects, uh, with 15 to 25 participants, so uh, roughly two to three participants per organization. Took us uh, 10 months, so we started in January and normally ended in October. Um, we had five offline events and also online activities between these um, offline events. Mapped on a, on a timeline, this is how it looks like. So we started with a kickoff, then we had first, second, and third event, and this directly maps to the three subtopics we defined. So there's a main topic, we define three subtopics, and these directly link to the first, second, and third event. So we talk, in the first event we talk about first subtopic and so on. So this was then uh, enhanced by online communication. For instance, we had polls about the subtopics in advance, so the, we have a kind of a trigger for the uh, communication and knowledge sharing uh, on the actual events. We had created a document library where everybody put into their PDFs, PowerPoint presentation concepts they can reuse uh, after adaptation in their own context. Uh, we had a literature review last year. We had web conferences and also, of course, we used the online activities for uh, organizing the events. So as a platform we used, for instance, IBM Connections. I don't know if you, if you know this uh, software. It's a 
big uh, collaboration tool suite you use uh, within the company. So in the kickoff, this is a place where uh, people get to know each other, where a trustful relationship will be built up. This is also the place where the three topics will be defined. And in general, we, you could see five events, but we also had on the evening before had an informal setting with sometimes external experts to the subject matter, but also had dinner together so that we create a trustful relationship and also have time for one-to-one -one communication as well. Uh, for the three events, we had a presentation of the host. So we had the, 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 the different various events that took place at the various participating companies. So we visited, for example, Siemens in Munich, uh, Telekom in um, Bonn and so on. So that we also get to know the context of the participants as well in which they operate. Um, news from participants, this is, uh, was one of the main points. Uh, it was an open discussion about what happened since the last event. So what are the actual current topics they are dealing with. News from participants were more or less uh, an open commun communication, uh, open discussion, whereas working on three topics um, is more very, really focused on creating new knowledge that is then shared within the um, project group. And finally, we concluded the project with, a, with the fourth and last event. The main knowledge that has been shared during the various events stays within the, within the project team. But we also uh, created a, a public open uh, bench learning report. You can look it up via SlideShare if you're interested. But also I have two copies with me. So if you're interested, you can just take one. We also talk, uh, talked about feedback and next steps. So, some real life examples. Um, so, for the Bench Learning Project 2012, for instance, we had a topic of social intranet, and here are the three sub -top topics listed adopting of social intranets, motivating empl employees, and finally searching and finding information. So, these were the three subtopics. Um, participants, uh, Siemens, Otto Group, uh, Audi, Adidas, and so on. And as you can see on the timeline, we also try to visit as much uh, companies as possible. This um, picture, for instance, was taken uh, at the headquarters at Google in Munich. Um, next one was in 2015 for the topic of community management. So all topics we are conducted the <coughs> bench learning project very closely related to social intranets and social media within the company in general. Uh, community approach was one topic. Uh, interestingly then uh, community KPIs and how to measure success in general for social media usage and of course uh, an evergreen topic change management and cultural development how uh, to adopt those um, behaviors within the company. Bench Learning Project 2016 we continued with the same topic of community management and the topics were how to create a movement that means how to create a network of multiplicator, multiplicators within the, uh, within the company that spread the voice, so to speak. Uh, the second topic then was digital leadership. Since most of the participants, uh, their topics of social intranet, social media, are now getting very closely really related to uh, efforts regarding um, digital transformation and therefore digital leadership and how uh, leadership and management uh, should also embrace these tools was one of the topics. And the last topic here, intercultural community management. This will be actually uh, the topic we will deal with uh, in September. So it's about what do you have to have in mind when you have communities that are where participants from all over the world, uh, but also what are companies that are using uh, such tools more or less, more heavily or less heavily, like you said before, Netherlands or the US are quite heavily using it, whereas other companies are more reluctant to, to use it. Top five aspects to ensure when conducting such a bench learning project for whatever domain you might choose. Um, first of all is uh, you should choose um, companies or participants with a simil similar experience level for that subject matter. Uh, so because therefore you ensure that it's a mutual uh, mutual exchange of knowledge on both sides because if you have a, uh, have a newbie 
and an expert on a, on a subject matter, then it's not balanced and some people might complain then about it. Um, next point, connect participants with experts outside uh, the project boundary. So we try to uh, make use of our network and invite as many experts also to the offline events as possible. So give you new perspectives, new insights, different angles on the topic. Third one is balance of open exchange and specific working on topics. So we try to balance open conversations, open discussion rounds, especially in the morning, whereas in the afternoon we try to more specifically also work on, on, uh, on new topics. Fourth point is include informal settings to create trustful relationships. Uh, we did it by incorporating um, pre-events in the, in the evening. And finally, trigger action between events and claim input. That means if you want to have specific working on topics uh, during the whole project time, there needs to be a project manager who takes care of because uh, collaboration or that, that kind of scale doesn't happen naturally because when everybody goes into their own uh, company again, they are, have lots of things to do, they have their own work and there have, has to be somebody who triggers then um, um, feedback and so on. So that's, that's it already. If you uh, are keen about learning more about the topic of bench learning and see more uh, information about it, you can refer to our open wiki. It's, about, it's uh, accessible by, by, via wiki.cognion slash de slash bench learning and all the bench learning projects are directly linked from there. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.